Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Datamatics Global Services Limited Q1 FI23 Earnings Conference Call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. And now hand the conference over to Ms. Asha Gupta from Watson Young. Thank you, and over to you, Ms. Gupta. Thank you, Nirav. Good afternoon to all participants in the call today. Welcome to the Q1 FY23 earnings call of Datamatic Global Services Limited. The results and presentation have been already mailed to you, and it is also available on the website www.datamatic.com. In case anyone has not received the copy of press release and presentation, please do write to us, and we will be happy to send you off. To take you through the results and to answer your questions, we have with us the top management of the company, represented by Rahul Kanodia, Vice Chairman and CEO, Sandeep Mantri, EVP and Chief Financial Officer, Mithul Mehta, EVP and Chief Marketing Officer. Rahul will start the call with brief overview of the quarter on the business. Which will be then followed by financials given by Sandeep. We will then open the floor for Q and A session. As usual, I would like to remind you that anything that is said on this call which gives any outlook or for the future or which can be construed as forward-looking statement must be viewed in conjunction with the risk and uncertainties that we face. This risk and uncertainties are included but not limited to what we have mentioned in the prospectus filed with SEBI and subsequent annual report, which you can find it on our website. With that said, I will now hand over the call to Rahul. Over to you, Rahul. Thank you, Asha, and welcome and thank you everyone for joining our Q1 FY23 earnings call. Before I start sharing the business update, I would like to inform you all. Uh, that from this quarter we have reclassified our business into three segments: digital technologies, digital operations, and digital experiences. Till financial year 22, we used to classify them into two segments, which is IT services and business process management. The relook at our classification is primarily uh, driven by three factors. First, most customers are increasingly increasing their deployment of digital technologies. And Datamatics has been playing an active, support, active role in supporting them in this journey. As legacy technologies are passé, the future market and growth lies in rapid adoption of and migration to digital technologies, which includes cloud, DevOps, low-code, no-code, and SaaS platforms, digital workplace, analytics, and artificial intelligence. Second, most of all, most. Almost all of our back office operations are delivered on the back of digital platforms, and going forward, this would be the mainstay in delivering operations outsourcing. Our digitally augmented suite of technologies power our operations to deliver process excellence. The suite comprises of smart workflows, mobility, robotic process automation with Truebot, intelligent document processing with TrueCap Plus, AI ML models in TrueAI, and business intelligence, which is TrueBI. Third, the customer experience has become central to success of all companies. Today, all these companies have a multi-channel engagement model with their customers. With technology penetration permeating our lives, it becomes paramount for companies to deliver a seamless digital experience to an increasingly young, younger customer base. Our expertise in customer management processes and technologies ensure superior and consistent customer experience across the entire customer lifecycle. With all these factors coming together, and with Datamatics well entrenched in delivering digital solutions to our customers, it becomes imperative for Datamatics to reposition itself to capture market opportunities and more accurately, accurately represent our value proposition, which enables enterprises to go deep in digital to boost their productivity, customer experience, and competitive advantage. Coming to the business updates, I am happy with. The overall performance of the business. We have started the year on a strong note, delivering a revenue growth of 13.6% on a year-on-year -year basis. The growth was broad-based across all three segments. 
On a why-on-why basis, our new deal closure has increased by 27% in Q1 of this year as compared to Q1 of last financial year. In this quarter, we signed a total contract value for about 19.3 million, and for a sequential quarter comparison, we had signed a total contract value of 14.5 million in quarter four. Our EBIT margins on the year-on-year basis have shown a marginal improvement from 11.6% to 12% in the quarter. However, on a sequential basis, it has dropped slightly by 148 basis points from 13.5 to 12%, uh, primarily due to annual salary increments and investments in our products. Although across the industry, we have seen a drop in margins in this quarter, we are confident that our margins should be stable during this fiscal year. Our margins in digital technology were negative. This is primarily for five reasons. First, we have invested heavily in our true suite of products and fair collection platform. Our expenses have increased by 4.3 crores in this quarter compared to Q1 of last year. These investments are now yield, starting to yield results, and in Q1 we acquired 10 new customers. Additionally, last year we signed two large AFC deals with Kolkata and NCRTC, valued at 350 crores. These products have kicked off, and this year we will see revenue accrual from both of them, which will make us the leading player in AFC market. Second, there is a shrinkage in one of our large and highly profitable customers due to a multi-vendor strategy adopted by them recently. Third, 77% of our revenues in digital technologies is generated from India and the Middle East. These regions are very price sensitive and low margin territories. We have started taking corrective action on this front by renegotiating our prices and focusing more on the US and European markets. I'm happy to state that our efforts in the U.S. are showing good results, and our pipeline has increased by 32% over Q1 of last year. Fourth, some of our services are low-margin offerings, and we also have some low profitability customers. Here, we are systematically changing our service portfolio to focus on more high-margin solutions, solution areas, and de-weeding low-margin customers. Fifth, the current market is facing strong headwinds on the supply side, resulting in unusual increase in salaries and talent acquisition costs. To counter this, we have stepped up our investments in hiring, training, and upskilling all our employees. Our margins in digital operations and digital experience are healthy at 23.3% and 23.2% respectively. We expect these operations to continue giving healthy margins in the same range. Although the macroeconomic environment with the war in Ukraine and the economic wars with Russia and China, coupled with the inflation in the US and Europe, pose a concern in terms of a looming recession and therefore a shrinkage in demand. We have not experienced a slowdown yet. Although we remain cautious about a possible downturn, to date we have seen a very healthy demand environment for our services. In conclusion, going forward, we are optimistic about the overall demand environment and are confident of maintaining the growth of around 15% in the coming year. With that, I will now hand over a call to our CFO, Mr. Sandeep Mantri. Sandeep, over to you. Thank you, Rahul. Welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining us in quarter one FY23 earning call. As explained by Rahul, effectively this quarter, we are changing our segment with our deep in digital approach, and therefore, we have changed our segment reporting from traditional IT and BPM to digital technology, digital experience, and digital operations. And also, effective this quarter, we are reporting EBIT and not EBITDA for segment. With this now, let me take you through the financial performance for the quarter ended June 30th, 2022. Our Q1 FY2223 revenue is stood at 326.9 crores, which is 4.3% up on a sequential basis and 13.6% on YOY basis. Our consolidated EBIT grew by 17.9% on YOY basis. The EBIT margin for this quarter is 12% compared to 11% in last year's same quarter. However, on sequential basis, our margin has dropped slightly from 13.5 to 12% due to higher increments and higher spend on product development and marketing. We, how, we saw the drop margin drop across industry in the range of 1 to 2.5% in this quarter. We aspire to maintain a healthy double-digit margin in the coming quarters. 
Uh, our other income for the quarter was 13.2 crores compared to 12.2 crore in the last quarter, which is an increase of about 1 crore on a quarterly basis. This other income comprises of uh, one-time income, investment income, and exchange fluctuations. Uh, our PBT before exceptional item was at 51.6 crore compared to 53 crore in the last quarter and 36.7 crore in the last year, same quarter, which is 2.7% less, less on quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, but 40.5% more YOY basis. Our tax rate for the quarter is 17.3% compared to 19.1% in FY. 21-22, we expect to maintain the tax rate north of 20% uh, in this year. Our EPS for the quarter was at 7.36 per share, which is higher than last year, the same period, which is stood at 6.72 per share in the last year quarter. Uh, on segment, our segment-wise results are uh, as below, as, as follows. Our digital revenue was at 147.5 crores a growth of 3.6% sequentially and 18% on YOY basis. Digital operations EBIT margin was healthy at 23.3%, which is 300 basis point up on a YOY basis, and its contribution to total revenue was 45%. Our digital experience revenue was at 46.2 crores, a growth of 15.7% sequentially and 18.9% on YOY basis. Digital experience EBIT margin was at 23.2% and its contribution to total revenue was 14%. Uh, our digital re technology revenue was at 133 crores, which is a growth of 1.6% sequentially and 7.5% on YOY basis. Our digital technology EBIT margin for the quarter remains at a negative of 4.3%, primarily due to higher spend on products platform development and sales and marketing, as well as shrinkage in one of our large customer, large profitable customer, due to a multi-vendor strategy adopted by them. Uh, our digital technology contribution to total revenue was 41%. Uh, coming to balance sheet, we continue to remain healthy. Uh, as on June 30, 2022, our liquid and cash net of debt stood at 388.6 crores. Our DSO was at 69 days as of June 22, as compared to 74 days in March. In terms of geographical footprint, our uh, US is the largest geography with 55% of our business coming from US. India is 25% and the rest of the world, including UK and Europe is 20%. In terms of industry footprint, DFSI continue to, continue to remain largest segment for us, which is 25% of our revenue, followed by education and publishing which is 23% and then technology and consult, uh, consulting at 22%, manufacturing infra and logistic at 13%, 7% is non-profit or non-governmental organization, and they start 3% of our total revenue. Our client contribution remains very healthy with top 5, 10, 20 clients contributing to 25%, 37%, and 50% respectively. And this time we added, this quarter we added 19 new clients in the quarter. Uh, there were, these were the update on the financial for the quarter. Thank you for your patience and continued interest in data matrix. With this, I will now pass on the call to operator to open the floor for question and answer session. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. The first question is from the line of NGN from Enam Securities. Please go ahead. In the context of where the world is moving on digital, to some of your own digital assets that you have built over a period of time. And uh, uh, you have a nice set of digital assets for the automation assets and digital modernization assets. Uh, and uh, uh, the three businesses that you have, they all have uh, great potential going forward. Uh, so let's start from each of these businesses, starting from 
digital operations. So this is a business where you have high levels of productivity, high levels of margins. And uh, what's the outlook for this? So this business uh, is uh, can grow greater than what it is today. How much can it get better? Uh, what I mean is, uh, how uh, how do you focus on large deals today? So how do you win larger deals than what you have been winning? How do you focus on many million dollar accounts? Uh, one to five to 10 to 20 million accounts. And so that's where uh, when, uh, that can happen only when you win large deals. Large deals can construct number of million dollar account of high potential. So if you can uh, take us through that, that will be useful. I also see some very interesting commentary on the the operation side and the deal win qualities. So you have talked about five, six deal wins. So if you can comment about potential of each deal win, that will be useful. Okay. Uh... So uh, on digital operations and digital experiences, mm -hmm. uh, digital operations is a more, the way we differentiate between the two is digital experiences, more front office, where there's customer engagement, multi-channel engagement with end customers. Uh, digital operations tends to be more back office, which is internal operations to the Correct. banks, insurance companies, uh, those types of companies, uh, publishing houses, retail, mm -hmm. so yeah. So, so the, the opportunities are vibrant because uh, a lot of these guys are now being driven on the back of the digital platforms that we have. And given that uh, we are seeing good traction, we are seeing uh, also larger deal sizes. Uh, mm -hmm. We have in the past won some, we are on the verge of uh, winning a few more. Um, we have recently be, been covered by Gartner in their magic quadrant and that speaks volumes of our, our offerings. Uh, we've won a few deals that are a million, $2 million deals. Uh, they are uh, in a relative sense still small, but nevertheless larger than uh, many deals. But uh, our US focus is giving us access to a lot more larger deals. Mm -hmm. uh, and and I, I am very optimistic about uh, these deals. On the customer experience front, we have an extremely good pipeline. Mm -hmm. Those these are also fairly large, anywhere from a TCB of three million, five million to even upwards of ten million, and we we have won a few deals, uh, and we are uh, we are right now in this race on in several other deals which are looking extremely promising. So there's a lot of what we do with digital proctoring. So this is not a call center. So we do a lot of work with uh, data and. Uh, that's looking extremely promising, uh, more so than the digital operations. Not that it's a bad area, but uh, it's looking very, very promising. Uh, so both of these, I think, are, are, uh, are, our pipeline is looking very robust with large deals in the pipeline. So I'm, I'm very confident that we'll have a good run on these fronts. In terms of the details of deal wins, I don't think I would be at liberty to disclose some of those details, obviously because they're customers and the uh, specific and sensitive, uh, but uh, suffice to say that you know they are all large enterprises, and uh, and they are potentially highly scalable. So once you are in a large customer, you can scale, and that could become several million dollar deals uh, for us. And what is the largest deal you have won uh, recently? Uh, well, in the AFC space, as I mentioned, we won uh, in the last quarter of last year two deals totaling to 350 crores in, mm -hmm. in value. Uh, mm -hmm. so, so those are the larger deals. In the, uh, in the BPM space, uh, in the enterprise, uh, in the digital experiences, we got uh, deals of 10 to $15 million. And in the digital operations, we got deals in the pipeline. I'm talking about a pipeline. Of between two to five million dollars. This ten to fifteen million dollars single deal you're talking about. Yes. Or single deal of ten to fifteen. Yes, it's a TCV, total contract TCV. value, obviously to be executed over maybe three to five years. Three to five years, and okay. So this is and uh, what kind of margins these deals will have? There's there's a range. Each deal is slightly different, anywhere from forty to sixty percent, depending on the uh, depending on the deal. And depending on how well it takes off, also it is uh, 
uh, right now with the current fluidity in the market with the way the costs are going up uh, that is i think a range because that that uh, you know the way salaries are going up is go- is crazy and therefore whether we maintain the margin or not something that's uh, questionable so you think the the, the potential for growing operations uh, portfolio is huh? i i just want to clarify those margins i'm talking about gross margins huh? gross margins gross margins okay uh, uh and the the uh, you know the, how do you grow uh, you are saying that the operations uh, vertical is difficult to grow because there you have reached the potential already or no 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 I, I, no 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 i think i think we are we as i said i have a good healthy pipeline our focus on the us is delivering results mm-hmm. uh, our us pipeline has also increased substantially mm-hmm. and uh, i don't think there's anything restricting the growth we just have to be uh um, sort of uh, you know as long as we deliver well and aggressively mm-hmm. sell sell uh, there is no challenge that we face on growth today of course there's a bit of a challenge with the manpower shortage that you see in the industry but mm-hmm. i think that situation is probably going short lived and probably in 6 to 9 months that should settle down so which group can grow faster is it the operations or technology or experience, experience. i think of the three the digital experiences will grow fastest They followed, it was also partly because it's a smaller base uh, mm-hmm. followed by digital operations followed by digital technologies so digital experience is smallest or digital technology is smallest digital technology i thought is smallest no digital experience is the smallest digital experience is smallest okay yes so technology includes uh, your metro and all that stuff also yes that's also, right. uh, i see and uh, uh, and the uh i think your experience margin is uh, very low no? almost uh, negative margin isn't it so how do you get uh, 23.2% ebit margin ebit margin 23.2% yes yeah. no I, i'm getting confused with the uh, technology i think technology is the low margin yeah technology is low margin and i, I my, in my address uh, it was right now running at minus 4% so and you I, that margin up Yeah so I I did uh, talk about it in my address mm. that there are five steps that we are taking mm. uh, one is of course there's a huge investment we made in the product mm. but these investments are now beginning to show results because some of the deal wins will start delivering the the benefits that we have invested for mm. the second is uh, there was a slight shrinkage in uh, one of our key customers which is a very profitable customer because they went with a multi vendor strategy mm. so uh, that uh, we have uh, 77% of our revenue coming from india and middle east and mm. we are pivoting out of india and middle east towards the us and europe mm. uh, and the results are right now in the us our pipeline has improved by about 32% uh, which is very healthy and i'm slowing down the efforts in india and middle east and pushing more efforts in europe and the us the mm. fourth was in terms of deweeding some low margin customers uh, mm. uh, exiting from those projects and also just changing our service portfolio uh mm. and focusing more on the high margin offerings and projects and reducing the emphasis on the low margin ones so a lot of internal pressure on moving away from those and finally uh you know we we are trying to address the current headwinds with the salary hike that we see across the industry but i suspect that should settle down in about 6 to 9 months because the current trend cannot continue for so long mm. and uh, what about the automation business the new one new one on the block it's yeah, so getting so better that's just much better as i mentioned we got 10 new customers in the first quarter of this year mm. uh, if we continue that trajectory we should end up between 40 to 15 new customers in this financial year uh, mm. which is looking very healthy some of those these are also large deals yes. uh, but uh, yeah as they as they materialize i'm sure we will talk about it in our quarterly earnings calls and what are the deal sizes in this it ranges from a very small value sometimes customers are just testing it and they were 20 30000 50000 some mm-hmm. of the better ones would go to about a million dollars per annum kind of mm-hmm. uh, just, and potentially this can be million dollar kind of deals most of them uh they would always start small 100 200000 is normal mm-hmm. uh, over say, two or three years so you talk mm-hmm. about about 60 70000 per annum kind of a deal they mm. start like this and then they scale depending on how how well it uh, delivers so mm. far we've got very good uh, traction the analyst coverage has been excellent 
Uh, mm. Customer feedback has been excellent. Uh, so, so far we've had very, very good feedback uh, from both the, the mm. uh, customers as well as the and I'm talking about US and European customers, not Indian customers. Mm -hmm. And also the, uh, and this like Gartner, Forrester, Everest, these guys, you know. And they're mm -hmm. benchmarking us with all the other products in the market. And they give us a extremely encouraging feedback. And what's the revenue model for, for this? So right now we've not called this out because of a couple of reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, and therefore we don't uh, disclose these numbers. One is that there is some component of direct customers and there is some mm -hmm. component of indirect customers where we bundle it along with some services. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we need to call that out and we'll go through some motions of sort of uh, segregating our financials. Uh, once we do that, we will be able to give a better picture. Is there a license, transaction, maintenance, application? How does it work, the revenue? Yeah, a, lo a lot of it is uh, licenses and when it's bundled with our thing, it goes as a platform. Platform. It so you... platform when it's bundled with our services, so it, it can mm. be a bolt-on to our workflow. Mm. It can be a standalone. So it varies customer to customer depending on what they're looking for. But is there an implementation cost maintenance, implementation revenue also? Or just there, is the... a, there is a small implementation revenue at the time of uh, selling. Mm. Uh, very often we would even give that to a partner. So oh, partner. Correct. Implemented and if, the, mm. if not, if for whatever reason, if the customer prefers that Datamatics implemented or the partner is struggling, then mm. we step in and we implement it as well. So what is the ratio of license to implementation? Will it be 1 is to 1, 1 is to 1, or 1, one is 1 to 0.5? One, how much is that? Yeah, so I'll answer that. Uh, hi, this is Mithul here. So uh, typically it is about 1 is to uh, 4. But 1 is to 4. Oh, that is that's the way it's... Then it's attractive. If it is one is to four, it will be attractive. Yeah. Ah. yeah. So, uh, and and then it is uh, uh, impl so implementation is first time, and then this licensing uh, mm. cost goes every year. Hmm. So one is to four. You mean one 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 dollar is four uh, dollar services for that I was implementing, or the other way? Yes. Four dollars to services. One dollar to license. Services is time bound one time. Uh, mm. License is annual. Then this business should grow faster than what it is today. If it is one is to four, that's how the ERP business grew. That's how the hyperscalers are growing. You know? So if that is the case, why it's not growing? Yeah. You know, so the services part we are trying to give to our partners because the partners mm. then get us. Correct. Business. Correct. Partner, unless the partner gets four, you won't get a million dollar, which is very profitable. That is correct. That's that true. Is but this is a recurring uh, revenue stream. Mm. At the same time, uh, you know, it's license cost. So mm. at some point in time, this this financial will pay. But you know, mm. much. Uh, and this license is payable over how how upfront or how is it payable? It's paid annually, and of annually. course, uh, depending on the deal, we oh. tend to give uh, payment uh, you know structures and milestones if the mm. customer wants. But ideally, we take it upfront. So it's more like a SaaS uh, license. Absolutely, it's it's it is a SaaS uh, it's a SaaS license. Yes. So uh, when do you see it kicking off? When, do you, when you're saying it's one is to four, it should really kick off quickly, yeah. unless the potential is uh, uh, going away. You know, because see, yeah, well, I what I see is when you see these stock prices of automation anywhere and all, uh, it doesn't say that things are looking good for the industry. So. I think you should quickly deploy this and uh, get into uh, your partners making more more money. You know? then, only, then only you can make money. Correct, correct, correct. So we have stepped up our marketing uh, activity and sales mm. activity around this uh, quite a bit this year. Yeah. Mm. In fact, last December, we also relaunched our partner program. Mm -hmm. Our partners more uh, active in this space, right? Mm. We're seeing uh, good traction on that. A lot of partners are much more active and upgrading their skill sets on the product and everything. So uh, we've seen the green shoots, if I have to mm. summarize it. Uh, we are hoping and we are fairly hopeful on, uh, on on growing this business. Do you think some of the DSIs will be interested in this? Sorry? The global system integrators? Absolutely. So there. Uh, so while on one hand uh, there are enterprises, but there are global system integrators who are looking at a larger solutioning uh, uh, deal. 
uh, to incorporate this uh, the product and and also uh, bpm uh, vendors uh, who are uh, you know looking at uh, automating processes at the core of their operations mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. market is uh, signed up with anybody any global gsi so we have uh, tcs as one of our global gsis we have oh. many uh, regional players uh, mm -hmm. as uh, uh, global gss and especially in especially uh, you know mid size companies are more vertical focused mm -hmm. uh, more regional uh, focus so those are the ones which are uh, do they have a serious team deployed for this cause or is the, the, the the smaller mid size ones have the larger mm -hmm. ones because they're carrying multiple offerings to the uh -huh. market and multiple products mm -hmm. uh, uh, have not yet fully kicked in mm -hmm. uh, they they compare or not compare because they have other engagements with other mm -hmm. product companies but the smaller mm -hmm. middle, middle ones are kicking quite well so you see a big number coming next year Uh, this year yes this year we will test it if, if the current run rate of 10 logos in a quarter continues then we should have mm. about 40 50 logos within this year mm. or hopefully even more i think mm. this year will be very uh, crucial for for testing the waters and right now it's looking very promising so when do you see a 5 10 million dollar kind of revenue coming from this uh, i i i think towards the end of the year we'll get a good sense of where we are we got another three quarters to go so i think we'll be in good shape maybe good. maybe after six months or nine months six quarter, months we can have that discussion yeah hmm. excellent thank you rahul thank you You're welcome thank you part of the star and one to ask a question the next question is from the land of shubankar oja from sks capital please go ahead Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for this opportunity. So, just wanted to uh, better uh, explanation on this digital technology. Is uh, why your margin uh, dropped to uh, negative four and four and a half percent? For what reason? And what is the outlook here with respect to the margin? So, as explained by Rahul Shubankar, there were a couple of reasons. So, one was we are investing heavily in our product space, which is into you know product core development as well as marketing and sales so this time we have spent quite heavily on our sales and marketing and product in addition to the regular uh, product development second is one of uh, our highly profitable key highly profitable customer have uh, you know has a shrink in business because of a multi vendor strategy which has resulted to uh, shrinkage in revenue from that customer and that was highly profitable so to that extent our margin you know got compromised uh third thing is uh, the demand environment in 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 this it space technology space where we have seen you know quite unusual increment this time and that has also resulted into uh, uh, cost increase and you know margin uh, lower margin in this space so i think in next 6 to 9 we will need to see next 2 to 3 quarters and we the problem will be fixed but it will take time its own time because uh, of these uh, reasons which are obvious and stated but i i do feel that we will get see a turn around within this financial year yeah, within this financial year two to three quarters from now we will see the the results showing uh, but if you see overall we are quite stable in terms of our margins uh, with this business and other businesses uh, the margins are stable and healthy and we continue to maintain a healthy margin a bit okay and with respect to this uh, i mean you said you started uh, investing heavily in this uh, is there a percentage of sales for this particular vertical that you are putting in not as of now a percentage of sales uh, because right now the strategy is more to you know basically capture the share market share in this space rather than you know putting a budget or putting a percentage to sales specifically in product uh, and platform businesses okay and uh, overall so uh, uh, you said that in a 15% kind of a revenue growth for this year is likely right and yes. and you expect a stable margin for this year yes yes that despite uh, despite this uh, vertical not being uh, the uh, not being achieving the earlier margin right i mean is that yeah. assumption yes that's the right? correct assumption that's great actually thank you so much thank, thank you. you thank you so much thank you Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. A 
Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question. Next question is from the line of Shreya, a retail investor. Please go ahead. Shreya, may I request you to unmute your line and go to the question, please? Hello. Yes, we can hear you now. Yeah. My question is: Are you bidding for any AFC projects outside India? Yes, we are bidding for some AFC projects outside India as well. Yes, that's correct. Okay. So, uh, can we have some details about it? Well, uh, there are right now three odd uh, large ones, and they would tantamount to approximately thirty million dollars uh, total. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, I don't. I'm not so sure. I would want to give the details of these doses. But yes, we are incre increasingly focusing on uh, opportunities outside of India. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. Anyone who wishes to answer a question may press star and one. A reminder to all the participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. As there are no further questions, and I'll hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. So thank you everyone for spending your time with us on this, this call. And we look forward to uh, connecting with you again next quarter. And thank you for your support and confidence in Datamatics. Uh, have a good day. Thank you. thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. On behalf of Data Datamatics Global Services Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.